Hello class. Today we will learn how to manually calculate a square root. Is this method useful to me? Do you have a calculator? Then this is not the method for you. You have a calculator. Use the damn calculator, you idiot. Do you not have a calculator? Do you need more than a simple estimate? Then this method will serve you well. Is this method easy? Absolutely not. It involves plenty of long division. Actually, not so much long division. It involves plenty of multiplication using missing digits where you have to fill in one of the places in the number, multiply the number, and compare the product to another number. And you have to do it all in your head or in scratch paper. And you will need paper for this method. The steps are not intuitive. They are not easy to memorize. And maybe they are if you understand the underlying mathematics, but I shan't teach you them. I shall only show you the method. May it serve you well. And, of course, if you can get by on an estimate, then you do not need this method. However, it does generate the correct answer to the exact value if you care to work it out that far and if there is a finite number that is its value. If you can continue going off into infinity with decimal places, then you just need to work it out until you're satisfied. We are going to use the number 194 as our example. The reason is that Big Mac by Gillette had given us three numbers we could use, 29, 78, or 194. And because step two of the method involves breaking the number up into pairs, and 194 gives us at least two pairs, we shall use this as our example. The first step is to estimate an answer. Human beings are stupid. They cannot handle mathematical calculations as well as a computer, and therefore, if you do not know at least a ballpark figure of what you should be getting, then when you get your final answer, you have no clue whether or not it is close to the true value. So, we estimate by finding a square above and below our number. Here we see that 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196, and that these two values lie on either side of our chosen number. So that we know our final answer should be between 13 and 14, and given that our answer is only 2 away from the 14 squared, we should expect maybe 13.9 something as a final answer. This shall be our goal. Step 2. We divide the, uh, the number up into pairs of digits. Add zeros in if you need to in order to figure out where these pairs lie. Remember that there are an infinite number of imaginary zeros in front of a number and behind a number as necessary. You may not split one of these pairs of digits with the decimal point. The decimal point must lie between a two sets of pairs. So, as you can see in the examples, we can have 3.14 and 15, but not 3.1, 4, 1, and 5. That is out of habit. I ended a sentence with a period. Forget that it is not a decimal point. Here we're going to split our example number into 1 and 9, 4. We cannot split it into 1, 9, and 4, because then that 4 would actually be a 4.0 and you cannot split a pair of digits with a decimal point. Each of these pairs of digits will correspond to a single digit in the answer, and the placement of the decimal point will correspond to the answer as well. Since you would have a pair of digits like 4.0 corresponding to a single number, you can't split that number in half somehow with the decimal point. Hence, the decimal point must lie either before or after a pair of digits. Then we set up a tableau. A tableau is the little symbol that you use in long division if you're from the United States, Canada, Australia, Great Britain, or Japan, possibly other places in the world too, although I know that there are other methods that are used. But, because we know that each pair of digits 
in the original number correspond to a single digit in the answer, you are free to break up the top of the tableau into that. And so you see here the 1 has a line, the 94 has a line. Now, the next step is to find a number whose square is less than or equal to your first digit pair. Here our first digit pair is just 1, so 1 squared is less than or equal to 1. We put the 1 on the left side of the tableau, a 1 on the top of the tableau, and then we multiply those two together. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. We're going to extend the bracket of the tableau down the left side just to keep our work on the left and our work inside the tableau separate. Now you're going to drop an empty place beneath the last digit of the number on the left bracket. Just to get the naming down, the numbers on the left side of the bracket at each iteration will be called the number. The number inside the bracket is the original number or more commonly through each iteration the next digit pair. And then the numbers on the top of the tableau will be called the answer. When I was in first grade, I do not know how they teach math to you today, we learned our numbers based on places. You have a ones place, you have a tens place, you have a hundreds place, and so on and so forth. Here on the, the left side, as you drop down, this will always be a ones place. On each iteration, you will drop down a blank ones place. You then take that same last digit multiply it by 2 and bring it down into the next place to the empty place you just left. So that 1 times 2 becomes a 2. It gets dropped down to the left of the empty place, thereby becoming a tens place. So that number will become 20 something. If your last digit of the number is greater than, well, is 5 or greater, then you break it up as follows. For example, for 36, 36 is the same as 30 plus 6. We multiply the 6 by 2 and get 12, and then we have 30 plus 6 times 2, 12 equals 42. So then you would drop down 4, 2, and then there would be the empty place, and so that would be 420 something. You then drop down the next pair of digits, if there is a remainder from the first pair of digits, then those become places. So if that was, instead of a 0, a 1, you would have 194. But here we have 94. Now for the tricky step. Find a digit, n, such that, find the largest digit, I'm sorry, n, such that 20n times n is less than or equal to the next digit pair. So uh, that is including the remainder. If that had been 194, we would be searching for something less than or equal to 194. But here it's just 94. So we have 23 times 3 is 90, uh, 69 is less than 94. 24 times 4 is 96 is greater than 94. So we're going to use 23. We place the 3 into the empty place and the 3 up on top, just like the 1 and the 1. And then we repeat steps 5 through 10. We are going to multiply 23 times 3, subtract that from 94, whatever number we end up with there, and continue on and on. If we had ended with a difference of 0, we would have an exact answer. If we have a remainder, which we will, then you can continue to drop down double zeros until you are satisfied with the accuracy of your answer. So to continue our example, we have 23 times 3 was 69. We subtract to get 25. We drop down double zeros. We drop down an empty place. 3 times 2 is 6, and we bring down the 2 as well. So now we're looking for 260-something less than 2,500. So that would be 9, which is 24, 21. We subtract again. Now here we would bring down 9 times 2 is 18. 
260 plus 18 is 278, and we drop that down. Continuing on, we find the 2, 55, 64, and we continue on. So, at the end, we have so far come to 13.928. This is very close to what we had expected. The actual answer, which is approximate, 13.928388277184678463893815213. You can, using this method, work out that exact same number, but it would take you a while. You saw how much work we had to do just for three decimal places. Any questions?